Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net. We're here at GDC 2016, and I'm joined by Crytek's Frank Vitz, who is a creative director working on CryEngine, which is what we're talking about today. That's right, CryEngine 5. Yeah, yeah. And before we get to that, all this GDC 2016 coverage is brought to you by Raw Fury's Goner platformer game. You can check that out, links in the description below. So CryEngine 5, we saw this at a press conference yesterday, I That's believe. right. Can you give a brief overview of uh, technologically what's sort of the interesting thing that people can look forward to? Oh yeah, we, we uh, CryEngine 5 is a new release for us, in many ways a reset on a lot of technical features. Um, there's a long list of uh, improvements we've done, including uh, support for DX12, that's probably right. the highest on the list. And uh, we also have um, uh, completely rewritten the renderer. Actually, to do the proper job with DX12, we refactored the whole front end and uh, the core renderer to support DX12 properly, and we're seeing some amazing speed and performance improvements as a result. So that's pretty cool. Right, so this isn't just a wrapper then? It's no, it's not. It's a direct uh, implementation. You know, the, the renderer is set up to take advantage of DX12. We're actually going through it now step by step and realizing where that power can pay off, but for the kind of games that CryEngine is traditionally known for, large open worlds with lots of foliage and you know thousands of draw calls, as they say, it, um, we're seeing a, a substantial speed up. And of course, it's really good for VR as well because you have to sustain high frame rates in, in stereoscopic right. 3D. Yeah, the, uh, I guess the target minimum is what, 90 FPS? Exactly, and it's, it's 90 FPS left and right eye, so it's effectively 180 frames per second. So with DirectX 12, we're talking about sort of refactoring an entire engine, not yeah. just why is Why is that important? Why can't you just do uh, wrappers? Well, because the wrapper introduces overhead, and there, there's a cost there just making a translation through pointers. And also, what DirectX 12 does is give you direct access, <laughs> literally, to the GPU hardware. You know, DirectX 11 did a lot of uh, lining up and sequencing and scheduling of tasks automatically. And in, you know, for, games that are not bound by GPU requirements, it's okay. But if you're trying to use all the horsepower that's there in the GPU, having direct access and control to those things yourself, because you know how your game works, as a, as a game developer, you can customize it much more easily. Right, so we were also talking about particle effects. Oh yeah. That's obviously a big thing with CryEngine. What's new on Particle Effects with CryEngine 5? Well, we have something called Particle Effects. That's just our internal name for the new particle system, which is actually includes a new um, editor that allows you to create the effects and author the shaders for them. But the shaders and the particle effects and their dynamics are all now executing on the GPU. So that, again, gives you a, ma a massive speed up. We can do particles that look more like fluid simulations, and we can do screen space collisions, so particles can look like they're not just passing through the world, they're interacting with things. So fluid simulation is an interesting one, because yeah. it's traditionally, at least in, in our experience, sort of looking at games, a lot of it in the past has been done with sprites or sort of 2D images that yeah. are cheated. So how is, uh, how is the interaction in terms of particles with other particles, or? Well, I, no, you, you can't do too much particle-to-particle right. particle interaction, because a true fluid simulation would simulate it like a finite element model or a, a mesh, or there would actually be, each particle would be aware of all the particles around it, and that's too expensive to do in real time. We actually can do that, and then cache the results and play them back, but in, uh, in most cases, the, it's not really a fluid simulation, but it looks like it, because we can have complicated turbulence that allows them to flow like, they're, like a liquid would. Right. What about things aside from particles? So yeah. obviously there's DX12 optimization, that's big. Anything else that uh, people should be aware of for new oh, graphics? Yeah. yeah, there's lots of other things. We have, we have um, extended our audio translation layer, which is very cool, the ATL, as we call it, allows you to pick different audio middleware. We have SDL Mixer, which is our own internal uh, mixing solution, but we also now support WYs and FMOD. Right. So people who are creating games can pick whichever tool set they're familiar with. And uh, audio has always been a big component of the power of CryEngine because you can make the sounds follow the objects and they fade off with distance and Doppler effects, things like that. And in VR, it's really even more important because you have this sense that the world is all around you and have it really feel like it's passing behind your head right. is not only um, 
hard to do, but it's really important. If you don't do it, it doesn't feel like you're really there. Well, gamers certainly experience the surroundings or the spatial awareness yes. given by audio. What do developers have to do for us to be able to appreciate that? What's it, how how manual is it? How automated is it? Yeah, it's a, it's an art form. I probably you know um, you have a limited number of objects that you can do what we call spatialization on, which means right. it, it tracks where they are and how fast they're moving toward you and whether they're behind your head. And we do all kinds of fancy attenuation things with them. There's a limited number of objects, but that's like 32 maybe before it becomes too uh, extensive. So you might think of the, that you've got like the background noise, the, the musical score and the dialogue that's always in front of you, and then up to 32 different things like ships going by or explosions that can be placed in 3D space. So um, it's a balancing act, you know? Right. But it's, that's more of an art than a technology sure. thing. <laughs> So this did remind me though, CPU yeah. threading has always been big for CryEngine in yeah. terms of actually being able to use a lot of threads. What's the load like on CPUs these days? How does it spawn? I, we previously spoke to Chris Roberts from yeah. Cloud Imperium Games, and he was talking about how with the version they were using, it sort of spawns a thread for game logic or for AI. Yeah. How do things work now? It's more or less the same. We have some ideas for advanced uh, threading, but basically the classic way to do is to assign one thread to the audio, one to physics, one to the all the different operations. And then uh, that's maybe not ideal if one of them is underutilized versus the others. Right. But I'm not really an expert on threading, so. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So CryEngine, the big news that we didn't talk about, it's a pay what you want model now. Yeah. And that's, uh, I believe the minimum is zero. Is the minimum right? is zero. Okay. <laughs> we don't actually pay you to right, use it. <laughs> right. There's no negative value. So if you are interested in playing around with it just for fun or as a developer, there's it's it's linked in the article that is in the description below, so you can find all of that. Yeah. And then DX12 stuff, we've got a big news announcement coming up from NVIDIA today so that we're posting right. on the site. And some of that is pretty interesting as well that relates to a lot of this stuff here. Oh yeah, and, and also it, it, it sounds like we're started wrapping up here. I don't I <laughs> don't want to let you get away without mentioning that all of these new features most of them are, have a big impact on VR, of course, and now right. we have we have Oculus Rift support and PlayStation VR, HTC Vive, and OS right. VR all all in there. I mean, we, oh, we didn't even get into the new user interface and how Go much easier. <laughs> <laughs> we, we completely rewrote the user interface as well. It's now QT based for people who are interested in that. It's more modular, uh, rearranged where the icons are to make the, the workflows more intuitive, and um, it's also user extensible, you can configure the interface the way you want. People uh, find the the vast array of things you can do with CryEngine somewhat intimidating, so right. being able to organize it into a way that makes it make more sense, we hope is going to help everyone. Very cool, so big advancements for CryEngine, links in the description below, Yeah. and thank you again for joining me. My pleasure. We'll see you all next time.